Hey everybody, it's Chris. Next step on the 1855. I want to get the differential out, clean that compartment, change the seal on the shaft, and uh, I'm going to have to reshim it. I can tell it's a little loose. That can come out sitting on the tractor on this style of uh, subframe. It just clears. You got to have both sides of the axles out because they go through the differential. Um, but Oh, the bushing is, well, I think, gone there. And so I figure out I'll just uh, drop the whole thing. I'll be able to clean things up better for paint. Uh, put a new bushing in there and there. Uh, probably make it a little easier to get to the steering cylinders. I'm going to rebuild those. I got this handy dandy cart. I can set it on and roll it out sideways and get it out where I can work on it easier. So. I guess first thing to do is drop it down some and then uh should be a matter of four bolts back here and i think it's six up there yeah something like that let's get at it got these uh handy dandy jacks So I can just let the frame down. Tight clearance in there, on that one anyways. Got it broke loose, but I'll have to do the rest either with an end wrench or by, by hand, hopefully. some looseness in that front pin. I think I'll just take that part off now. One less thing in the way. There's just a single set screw comes in from underneath here. Goes up against that. I know it's going to come out of the middle all right. But the two halves seems pretty solid in that so there's a chance it could drive out hard. I guess we'll find out. pin seems to be in good shape. There's actually some bushing left in there. And it seems to be tight to the housing, so new bushing is going to probably take care of that one. That's good. The back one, maybe not quite so much. Now this back pin, so there's where it was. The set screw didn't it came out fine um, but obviously loose in its housing if I slide it back to where the shaft ain't worn a lot better to see what the availability of a shaft is um, could get this board out and have a have a machinist board out and put a sleeve in there to stiffen it up 
I guess it depends on how tight I really need it. So, don't forget a new shaft. This one's got a lot of wear in it there. If I can, might have to have a new shaft made. Guess time will tell. Now you can see why there's a notch cut out there. There is one here, and one there, and one there. Conical, over there. Conical washers that seat down in there, and that helps lock everything together and keep it all aligned and tight. So those will have to come loose. All the bolts and nuts are off. So let's see if we can't get her to break loose. There's one of them cone washers, kind of like a cone shaped lug nut. Keeps everything where it should be. Okay, all the cones are out. Of course it slid back into place. I can tell it's a snug fit. There we go. I say it should come out. Watch this, there we go. Let's say watch this higher ratio or lower ratio with a bigger gear, but it made it. Take it over to the table. Oh, right in the shin, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there she is, the differential. And it won't turn because the yoke is sitting down on the table there. Everything's looking pretty good. Spider gears look all right. Cool. Well, need to get that off to get the seal out, which that could have been done right in the tractor, but then the shims, not so much. This works pretty slick. Um, I guess uh, I've seen other applications that use it, but instead of using shims to set your bearing preload, you got these uh, nuts that turn it on each side. And basically like a main cap in an engine and then this pin here keeps the uh, adjuster nut from turning. Then you can not only set your bearing preload, but you can set how close the gear is to the uh, pinion shaft. Oh 
because there's threads in there, I think I'm going to get a punch and uh, on this other side, put a mark on each side so I make sure I get that cap on that side so that the threads all line back up and everything is good. Got a castle nut just like on a transfer case here with a cotter pin. Well, inch and a half was the answer for what size nut. get a puller rather than messing something up. Oh, I think she's starting to go. Uh oh, running out of thread. That's all she wrote for the puller without putting a spacer in there. Technically, I wouldn't have to pull this cover. I've done them on the tractor before. Get the drive shaft off, pull the yoke off, and then you can remove these bolts. There's a gasket under there, or if you can get a puller in there to get the seal out, then you can just drive a new one in. Maybe I power wash this off. Good, that seal doesn't look like it's uh, got a lot of life left to it. But in order to adjust the, there it is. As I say, don't tell me you're not loose anymore. Adjust the bearing end play, which uh, gets somewhat done by this uh, yoke pushing down. Okay, get this cap off. Yep, just a little looseness. This is a unique bearing, which we'll see once we get it out of there. Got her set up in the press. Not taking hardly any pressure to do with this, which is good. Two bearings, but only one race. It's got both uh, halves in it. And then there's a shim stack in between. And from the little bit of wiggle I'm getting, probably just need to take out about the thinnest shim and push them back together. Probably another uh, time for the press. Well, I got it apart, and now I think I'm going to have to look at the book. There's a spacer, but no shims. I was thinking there was a shim stack between there. I did this on the 1650, but boy, that was many, many years ago. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, maybe it's preset. Maybe I just needed to tighten the yoke down a little more. But it does have a spacer. I'll read the book. Well, the book has the answers. It's not this, necessarily the answer I liked. Uh, this thickness of the spacer is preset at the factory when Clark built it. And there is a shim kit available, a new spacer and shim kit, if you have to replace it. So I guess I will see what I can do. I could put that on a, a lathe and 
knock a little off from it. Hope I got it right, but I think I'd rather have the shim set. So I'll have to do some looking, see what I can come up with. Well, it's time to dig through my stash. I know I've got some seals. This one's a Chicago Rawhide 22391. This is the pinion shaft seal for that right there. Just knocked it out. That'll help identify stuff out of my stash. And I guess I need to do that so I can figure out what I need to order now that it's all apart and what I've got. And then I can start cleaning parts while I'm waiting for parts. I think we'll call that another episode. Now you know what it looks like. Tune in next time to see if I can put it back together. Thanks for watching.